For the latest top tips, reviews and advice, please subscribe below. Hello and welcome to Walls Camping and Leisure with me, Mike. Today I'm giving you guys a review on a brand new model for Van Gogh in the Airbeam collection. So this here is the Van Gogh Inspire 800XXL. The name Inspire has been around for a while, but they basically have sort of chopped and changed two models, brought them together to give you this nice, big, open, spacious, inflatable family tent. So the Inspire, if the main way to think about it, is the um, Inspire style. So you've got a nice big open canopy at the front. You still have the ability to sleep sort of six, but now it's an eight berth. But they twinned it up with what used to be the Eclipse. Purpose being is you've got the Eclipse internal living size with that Inspire sort of canopy. So it's actually the biggest inflatable tent that Van Gogh do. And probably, to be honest, for this season, it's probably going to be the most popular one as well, just because the internal space, the features involved. But we'll go through that all in this video. It's very quick and easy to put up. I mean, I myself put this thing up on my own in about 14 minutes. That sort of start to finish, pegged out, guide out the works, ready to camp in. So one person doing that makes it an absolute joy. Obviously, alternatively, something this size, especially you would probably take maybe half an hour, three quarters of an hour, if not an hour to put it up on your own, let alone with two people. So that's where the air system really comes into its own. Vanga used their um, basically best spec fabric. So this is a 420 denier polyester. Um, so it's about five, six times thicker than a normal tent fabric tends to be. It's actually made out of double ripstock as well. So it means if you get a little snag, it's not gonna suddenly go up all the way. It just refines it to that air. And the main reason, again, they use a thicker fabric is to have more life in a tent. So you'll get more use out of it. Initially, you will pay obviously a little bit more for that, but then you do see the benefits further on down the years. It's actually a 6,000 mil high static head material as well, so incredibly waterproof, more than capable of whatever the UK weather's going to throw at it, and even in continental Europe, you'll be fine as well. Due to being polyester, I would be aware that in hotter weather, it does get quite warm inside of it. That's where it may be worth certainly looking at sort of polycotton if you are going over to continental Europe, um, just for that breathability factor. Really good model, like I said, loads of little features involved. Major sort of tweaks and changes from sort of last year to this year. Uh, they've introduced a new extra window on top, as you can see throughout the top of there. Adds more light inside a tent, makes it feel more brighter and area, and it makes quite a bit of a difference, actually. On the inside, you've still got the nice big curtain as well, as you can get the privacy when you want to, and the curtain actually covers this big area in the main living area. You've still got Van Gogh's air speed valves, so each beam is done individually and it's a quite a very simple um, push-in open system. So it pretty much idiot proof. Um, and like I said, you can look at that in our pitching videos on how quick and easy it does go up. You've still got little benefits of things like uh, Vanga's line lock system. So it's a uh, gyro system, make it easy to adjust them and get it all looking nice and taut. As well as you've got loads of extra ventilation panels. So um, you can see just here, point vandals, really just keep a good circulation of air and help sort of combat condensation inside the tent. With something like this, there's numerous sort of optional extras to think about. So the um, sort of bread and butter items I would say is a footprint. Footprint is one thing every sort of sewing tent really has to have. So when you've got a sewing ground sheet, you need a footprint to go down underneath to protect the base. That way it keeps it nice, clean and dry. Carpet, more of a luxury item, goes in obviously in the living area, adds more warmth to the tent, insulation, a bit nicer certainly if you've got kids. And so if they're on their knees a lot, there's other, extras like um, canopies so you can buy sort of like a front canopy and also a front awning as well the difference is say from this year now with the 2017 season is the fact that the zips change so the zip actually rather than going from here just along the top which it did for the 2016 season 2017 the zip starts all the way down the bottom of here goes all the way up over the top and down the other side so really what it does it gives you a more thorough way of attaching anything onto the tent Purpose being really, like I said, it doesn't really feel like an optional extra, it feels like part of it. So when you buy something like the um, porch door, if you want to make this area nice and closed, it physically feels like it's built on, not actually a, a small extra. Same with like the front awning and the sun canopy, all optional extras you can look at with the Inspire. Obviously with the zip change, just be aware that any accessories last year, in terms of the canopies, won't marry up with this year's 2017 model. So just be aware of that when you are looking online for things. Another major change as well is the um, pole is now here. So they've actually, for this little side canopy, it's now an aluminium pole rather than an inflatable chamber. 
Personally, I probably find it's a little bit better just because it's how quick and easy it is to put a pole in when it's that small. The other thing, keep helps keep the cost down where it needs to be as well. So really impressive model. Obviously loads of talking points, but we'll talk about a bit more about the internal side and the layouts and features inside when we go and have a look. So um, let's have a look. So now we're inside the Inspire, the first thing you can get a bit more of a better bearing on is the layout. So you've got sleeping along the back, obviously a nice big living area and this beautiful big open canopy area. So the canopy area is not only nice and wide, but it's a good depth. And certainly as it is now, you've got plenty of shelter against the wind and the rain. Um, so if you're obviously cooking out here, you've got a nice open front so you can get a glorious view out and still have a fair amount of shelter. Like I said, you can more than happily, with the sort of offset door, put your cooking equipment all in here and have this pretty much how you want to. I think the porch doors are probably an essential thing to buy really with this because it gives you the extra versatility of shutting it up. I can understand how people probably wouldn't sometimes want that, but for me, it's something you can have at your sort of arsenal and you can go, do you know what, it's blowing a hoolie, it's, it's really nasty, let's then close it up and make this into a whole sealed section. One thing as well that's quite nice is the head height throughout the whole tent. So me being six foot two, six foot three, can stand up pretty much nearly anywhere inside of here. Uh, and certainly even in the corners, I'm not struggling for space at all. One thing that makes this tent feel really nice and breezy and airy is the multiple windows you've got in here. So you've got beautiful clear PVC windows and the addition of sort of these ones along the roof really make it lift it up in here, make it very bright. Normally with any sort of PVC window you've got, you have a curtain to get your privacy when you want to. That is not said actually with the canopy area. So the canopy area um, is just the PVC is always open. Another sort of thing I would bear in mind is the beams inside of here are 20% bigger than the normal standard beams. So it, what they call their super sized beams just to give you more rigidity usually down to because they're using a slightly thicker fabric. Um, personally, again, it's never a plus point for going for the next range up, i.e. this one here, the Elite, and um, you just benefit from a bit more stability in the tent. The door on this area is actually a fixed door, so it doesn't sort of zip all the way back like it does in the Illusion, but the benefit to having it fixed is you've got a mesh part here. So the mesh part, can, you can actually use that, zip that front door in, you've got the canopy to sort of provide you shelter and you can still get a beautiful circulation of air without having to sort of compromise with other bugs and critters coming in. That's one thing that really does lack in the illusions that you can, you can zip it all the way back but you don't benefit from the mesh door. You've still got a nice beautiful crystal clear PVC window and like I said with the curtain systems you can see it just here, zips either side so you can put it pretty much put it how you want to. So you can have the sky window still flooding light in but get the privacy against people walking past joys of this actually really is that with the zip system you can pretty much put it where you want it so you only want the door the window halfway open it's not an issue alternatively you can roll it down right down to the bottom and there's a little pocket just down there as well we'll just pop that in perfect the living area is obviously very large and there's plenty of space you're not going to you struggle to fill all the space to be fair, which is perfect certainly when it's chucking it down with rain, you are situated to whatever area you've got inside. So in my opinion, more space the better. It's actually larger than the Illusion. So it's, like I said, it's more like the Eclipse of previous years. So the Illusion, for example, would actually finish here. So you've got about a third extra living area, which really makes it feel open and spacious. You still got the eight people to sleep so you've got an uh, inner bedroom that sits in the living area with obviously a six along the back um, for me I find this a really good extra to have just to say if you've got extra you know if your kids coming over they want to bring some friends you can always pop this up when you need to my general feeling is it's a really nice thing to have but I wouldn't have it up during the daytime mainly because it takes obviously the internal living area and for me what you can do is more than happily pop it up in the evening time sleep a couple of people in there but when it comes to daytime take all your stuff out put it in the back sections take the bedroom down put it in the back sections as well and then use that for internal living area because that's really taking up what one sixth of your living area so it's obviously very easy to go up and down but when you have this in place the joys of this extra sort of size in the living area is you can still put cupboards larders and that sort of thing and storage in here without having to worry about taking up extra room so you can still enter that even when they're sleeping in the middle of the night.
pretty much below every sort of uh, window panel you've got uh, a ventilation panel which we saw from the outside. Really this is to offer extra circulation of air and keep it a bit more fresh and breezy in here. The main real reason for it is to basically combat condensation. Condensation is a real burden certainly in the air tents and anything with a sewn in ground sheet because the moisture has got nowhere to go. The material is very waterproof, which means it doesn't allow water in, but it doesn't allow moisture out as well. And certainly you've got condensation happening inside the beams as well, hence why it sort of collects and goes to its furthest point you can find on the floor. Like I said, the, basically all the ventilation panels from this year has actually been increased by 50%, just to try and help with that. So that's not only beneath the bedrooms, but above sort of the back bedrooms as well. It's, it just gives you more circulation, like I said, keeping it fresh inside. One thing to mention as well is you've still got the sort of two side doors here as well, so you can more than happily um, get the versatility of the winds blowing from one side, you can use the other. And on this side door, which we saw yet again from the outside, you've got that sort of canopy over the brow, uh, really so you can use that as a rain safe door like you can with the front. So if it's still sort of chucking down with rain, you can enter and exit through this door and the rain shouldn't come inside. Likewise, we're saying even if it's raining, you should be able to use the mesh door as well and get the circulation of air. At the back, obviously, we've got Three bedrooms, six sleep people. You've still got obviously the two berth there, but it's a two, two, and a two. This bedroom here is completely separate. Whereas this bedroom here, this two and two, can be opened up into just a basically a general four berth. So the joys of this actually is you could probably put mum and dad in here, have a nice four berth for the two of them, a kid or two in there, a kid or two in there, and you've still got plenty of room. Everyone's got their own bedroom, so hopefully everyone gets a good night's sleep. Obviously not guaranteed. But if you wanted to have it as basically four different bedrooms is a zip divider. So it feels completely different. It's not, it's not like a sort of sheet which you can sort of put your hand underneath. It feels like a separate bedroom altogether, but you've got the versatility of opening it up, rolling it back and having it as one big, nice open bedroom. Like I said, with the height, I can still stand up even in here, get changed in the mornings or anything like that. So that's a real sort of um, benefit really I find. And it's also the level of detail they go to with putting extras in. So um, little features like storage pockets, putting keys, phones, books, that sort of thing. You've got obviously numerous ones, one, two, three, four, along this sort of palmet, which just keeps it all neat and tidy so you don't see the toggle points. For me, that's a really nice extra, not something every company in every sort of range of tent offers. So that's a great talking point. Not only that, you've got then um, pockets inside the bedrooms as well. So stitched into here you can put you get again keys phones or a torch so if you wake up in the middle of the night and you need to go to the bathroom you can literally just find the pocket bang there you go off you go not trying to root around scrabbling around in the middle of the night in a pitch dark one thing as well to mention for new 2017 models is the introduction of a sky rail system so it's like a sky track this is actually almost like a beading fixed onto the beam sleeve this pretty much allows you to have a pegging point a hanging point any way you want. So you use a little slider that comes onto here, slides it on, clamp it on, so you can have a lantern here, 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 or anywhere. So you've got a um, sort of scurry system on one, two, three, four of the beams. So all the main beams in the living area. Joys this like sent eventually as time goes on, I'm sure Bang will bring out more and more accessories to link into the system. So what I would personally quite like to do is obviously use um, a clip to go there, use a clip to go there and hang sort of like a a saber light or a lantern across there flooding the um, inner bedroom area. One thing as well, just to bear in mind, is you've still got the sort of hanging points for lanterns. So if you don't want to use that sort of sky track system, you still get your hanging points. And yet again, you still got things like um, Velcro tabs, so you can have the cables run down to the cable entry point. So you, if you've got mains hookup, George, this is you've got um, basically a point on pretty much nearly every corner. So you've got one on the side, one on the front, and another one just behind the bedroom. So it doesn't matter what side you pitch up to the mobile mains or you hook up, you know, you can quite happily feed it through and just makes options more open. The other thing as well is quite nice, like I said, not only if you've got sort of the hanging points, but you've still got the TBS system. So this stands for um, tension band system. Now it's something that put in Van Gogh put in all of their um, tunnel tents. And it's a small little webbing strap that sits in the pocket like so, and it just goes up to these little clips just in the roof. Now, the reason being for this is, there you go, and you can just adjust it just like so, just to, just has a little bit more agility. You don't need to be overly tight like so. Just, but what happens is when the wind comes in from one side, obviously it's gonna try and push and try and buckle the tent. It's something they 
Bangor are using a high-end backpack in tents, and really 95% of people never really use them, let alone know about them. Um, but it's just there for added insurance if you do get an absolutely stupidly windy day. So what it does, like I said, it braces the corner. So if you get the wind coming from this side, that part just keeps the tension and just keeps the shape and makes it obviously more stable. The only obviously downside to that is the fact that necessarily you wouldn't use it when you're inside of the tent unless it's really bad because it obviously obstructs you walking through. So if you leave the tent for a little while or, you know, um, it's, like I said, chucking the wind down at you or the rain down at you, it's never an option you can look at introducing just to give yourself a bit more insurance. But in essence, really positive tent, loads of little features involved and um, extras as well. So things like I said, the footprint carpet, uh, the canopies, the skyline as well, the help with condensation is a really nice buy for this model. And certainly the porch door, I think, is a great optional extra. One thing I've yet to mention actually as well is with this tent, you get in the front part here um, a little sort of um, cupboard type of thing. So it's like a, almost like a triangle. So you can put your shoes and that sort of thing in there as well. Um, just yeah, again, because it's an external area, it just hides it and keeps it all neat and tidy. But really impressive model. Obviously plenty of space and it ticks so many boxes in terms of being quicker, easier, space, sleeps eight. You know, it's very well thought out this tent. And I think really it could potentially be the best seller for 2017 for Van Gogh, that or the Inspire. We'll have this on display in our indoor showroom so you can more than happily um, come and see it all up and have a feel because I think for me, the quality and things like that and the fabric they use, you can't really get a justified feeling for this tent unless you go inside of it. But like I said, alternatively, very quick and easy to put up. So check out our pitching video, but really good model, plenty of mileage. And like I said, yeah, I think it's going to be a big winner for 2017 season. So that is the uh, review on the Van Gogh Inspire 800X XL from us here at Atwoods.